All right, lastly, we're going to talk about <laughs> <laughs> Flaming Man, Shannon Sharp, man. Shannon Sharp has been on a tirade as of late. Man, we got <laughs> Shannon, Shannon Sharp almost getting into fights with, 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 with uh, Dylan Brooks at a Lakers game. The Lakers was playing the, 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 the Grizzlies and almost started fighting Dylan Brooks. I don't know what Shannon Sharp going on. Shannon Sharp is venturing into get off my lawn territory for real. Like the Shannon Sharp nowadays, when I see Shannon Sharp, I, the phrase "young whippersnapper" just keeps <laughs> rolling around in my head because I feel like Shannon Sharp is going to start talking like that at this point. Uh, but Shannon Sharp recently has some comments uh, aimed at Ja Morant because Ja Morant uh, had an associate of his removed permanently from all Memphis Grizzlies home games after an NBA probe. Now, I'm not exactly sure what constitutes an NBA probe, but apparently this person apparently this person was probed and it was determined that he needs to be permanently banned from, you know, the arena where the Grizzlies play. And so Shannon Sharp does a show with Skip Bayless undisputed on Fox and they talked about this scenario and Shannon Sharp had some words for uh, John Morant in terms of this associate of his being probed. So we'll go ahead and play what Shannon had to say because, you know, it's a little interesting and then we'll talk about what he had to say afterwards. Situation. I wish John would realize that he's not a stug. John is a really, John is a really good basketball player. John did everything he could to lift himself and his family out of this type of environment and to get away from this. And for some reason, he wants to surround himself with these type of people. Why? Bro, you not hard. That's not your life. People that in that life would give anything to be in your life. Great point. For some reason, you are worth 30, you worth all, you got a $200 million contract and you want people in the NBA to think you hood. To think you gangster mm -hmm. because you roll with these type of people, bro. You putting yourself in harm's way when you don't have to. Nobody looks at you, John. Think, man, that's a thug. He hood. <laughs> he down. He bought that. You not. Mm. Stop pretending. All you do is yap and talk about. Oh, I'm gonna let him live to see another day. I'm gonna do this. You're not gonna do nothing. What you're gonna do is get yourself in trouble. Put yourself and your family in harm's way when you don't have to. Just play basketball. If you want to do all that chirping and all that about y'all good, how great y'all are, even though your record indicate since you made your statement, Dylan Brooks made his statement, you've been awful. Have at that. I got no problem. I, I wish you wouldn't talk so much considering mm -hmm. y'all talk so much to have done so little. That's a part of it. I get that. But this, 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 what you're going about, pretending like you, like you down like that, that like you talk, that you carry, bruh, you putting yourself in harm's way. Mm. And it's not a good look for you. Stop this, man. You, this is not you. You, you, I mean, you, you played basketball to get out of this environment. You could, hey, I guarantee you got homeboys. You say that's your fam. You tweet out that's your fam that probably had talent like you, but they chose that life. Bro, you need to let that go. Because that's not you. It's not. You pretend like you hard, but you're not, Ja. You're opening yourself up. You're putting yourself in a position you don't even need to be in. And for what? For street cred? Come on, bro. Shannon not holding back on that one. Yeah, how exactly does he know that John Moran is not hard? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> how you know, bro? <laughs> so yeah shannon doesn't care shannon i will give shannon sharp this he is consistent in that he will call out uh athletes uh if he doesn't agree with something that they've done or said he doesn't try to do what i would say most other opinion people on tv do which is to give uh, a non-answer so as to not rub any of these people the wrong way because they want to continue to be friends and all of that kind of stuff. They don't want to ruin potential relationships. But Shannon will just kind of let it fly. Now, whether he's wrong or not, that's up to your interpretation. But at least he's consistent with that. But, you know, here he went again with John Morant, you know, and I don't know whether this has anything to do with that incident with the Grizzly at the Grizzlies game, at the Laker game. 
you know, a few weeks ago. I'm not sure if I don't, I don't know, but it's just interesting that another Grizzlies topic comes up this time with John Morant and Shannon Sharp is speaking like this. Yeah. Um, I say that um, as far as what Shannon said, I agree with uh, everything that he had to say. Um, if I'm John Morant or in his camp, to hell with what he said. And the reason why I would say that if I were Jaw or somebody in his camp was the delivery and the platform in which you used to, to say this. He can say he can say that he's saying this to help Jaw. But you're not helping Jaw by talking about him in such a way saying you ain't hard you ain't about that life. You know, all of these fighting words that will be said yeah. in somebody's <laughs> personal face. So I'm not going to hear your message. So at this point, who are you talking to? Are you saying this to help me? Because if you were trying to actually help me, those aren't the words you use to try to help a man. And so, yeah, you offended me, bro. Um, you coming at this weird. So if I'm job, I'm not listening. I'm not taking this on. All right. And then after, you know, because the, the whole thing is because, again, I don't disagree with what Shannon had to say. So I guess more or less it was more or less his um, his delivery. The of, tone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, you know, the tone. And um, now, granted, sometimes uh, pills are best served, you know, bitter. And, you know, you, you got to take it how it comes. But this is a situation where Shannon didn't have to be so explosive about it, I don't think. Uh, especially when you're talking to a young man who, and when you're dealing with these young people, these new people right now, they're very emotional. Uh, <laughs> you, you, really, you really have to speak in a way where uh, you're not infringing on them. Now, there's a difference between coddling and, and other things. But, you know, just communicate with them because these 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 kids now, they are a more evolved version of us. And when we were growing up, we just wanted explanations. We didn't need the because I said so. We just wanted explanations. These kids want more of an explanation than we did. So if you communicate with them and you talk to them instead of through them or over them, then they'll be more inclined to listen. So if he was really saying this to help Ja, then I felt like he would have came at this a lot better for the mature man that he already is. But to me, this was TV. It was soundbite. He wanted to he wanted to be more explosive. Um, he likes the pub that he gets from from because I don't know what he's doing outside of embarrassing himself. And because uh, I, I I have a great deal of respect for him. And how he's carried himself up until 2023. <laughs> and that's not good. That's not a good thing for his brand, at least for me. Because I'm a I'm a cool dude and I like cool, chill people. And I felt like he was always that. Was he a little extra? He always blamed it on the on the yak. You know. <laughs> so I was like, hey man, he little he sipped a little too much. But the 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 LeBron dick riding is on an all new level. I didn't think he can take it to a new height. He's taking it to a new height. Uh, Sideline shenanigans, on air beefing with with a uh, skip. Um, if this is all publicity, and you know, there's some type of mad scientist thing going on at Fox Sports Net that we don't understand, so they can always be on the tip of everybody's tongue. Kudos to them. But if this is just Shannon and both Skip just unraveling before our eyes. It's a wild concept, man. <laughs> it, is, it is definitely wild, but uh, I agree with his message. I do not agree with the delivery. So, yeah, I, I, I have a, I, I approach it from two sides. I approach there's, a, there's a side of it that makes me cringe and I don't like it, and then there's a side of it that I do like. So, uh, the side that I don't like, you mentioned. I don't know if this is TV stuff or whatnot. Um, there's a part of me that thinks that this is TV. And now, again, this is pure speculation on my part. So, yeah, disclaimer, yeah. 
Yeah, man. Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, dis- disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. This is JV wins reckless speculation. Yeah, okay? get into it. JV wins reckless speculation. So, part of this makes me th- part of the the part of this that I don't like is that it seems like a production that is made for TV. So, I have a my my very limited understanding of how these types of shows work is the hosts of these shows have the opportunity to suggest topics that they're going to do on any given episode. That's right. So like Stephen A. Smith on First Take has a lot to do with the topics that they bring up on the show. Does he decide all of the topics? No. But as the guy who's the headliner, Stephen A. Smith can be like, hey, this happened. I want this to be one of the segments on today's episode or on tomorrow's episode and the producers and everybody, they make it happen. And then you watch it and then they talking about it. So I'm fairly certain that if they do that on first take, then they do the same thing on, on undisputed and any of those other shows where the people who are on there, the hosts and the people who are participating in the show have some sort of ability to suggest topics. So with that in mind, and given how the uh, Shannon Sharp was at a Lakers game uh, where they were playing the Grizzlies, and somehow, some way, Shannon Sharp got involved with a scuffle with the Grizzlies players courtside at the game, I'm connecting dots and I'm saying, did Shannon Sharp suggest bringing this up on Undisputed? so that he can have a reason to call John Moran out for not being hard because <laughs> when, if, if you're paying I'm just saying like if you're if you're paying attention like I cuz I was watching real. the game yeah so I was I was watching the game when this went down and it was it was the main people involved was Shannon Sharp and then it was so Shannon Sharp and Dylan Brooks was the main people but then John Moran got involved and Steven Adams got involved those were the only Grizzlies players that were really involved with that with Shannon Sharp. So I'm sitting here and I'm saying to myself, nobody else is talking about this. Like, you know, between all of the sports shows that I watch on a daily basis, uh, no other show brought this up, this thing about John Morant and, and some person that he knows being the subject of an NBA pro, but they got kicked out the game. No one else is talking about this. No one else talked about it, but it was on Undisputed. I, I kind of don't think that's a coincidence. So I'm thinking that Shannon Sharp brought that up to the producers as a, as a topic to discuss on a particular segment so that he can get some grievances that he has towards John Morant off his chest by talking about it and saying you're not tough and you're not hard because I guess for Shannon Sharp, he had unfinished business. Because John Morant was one of the people who came at Shannon Sharp when that happened. Now, again, that is JV Wins reckless speculation. So do not take me saying that as I know for a fact that that's what happened. I'm just trying to connect some dots here as to why this was even broached on the show and no one else was talking about this. I mean, no one on TV, radio, or podcast talked about this, but it was on Undisputed. Even other shows on the same network weren't talking about this. It was just on Undisputed. So my thing is, why? Why are y'all talking about this? I'm just connecting some dots. And in connecting those dots, there's a part of it that seems rotten to me. Like, you're, 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 you're calling this guy out for not being hard and not being tough for the purposes of your platform and your TV show, this guy is not going to respond to you unless he chooses to like you're, you're using this as a springboard in order to exercise these demons on your behalf. You're and right. there's part of me that's, there's part of me that's saying, bro, you're bigger than that. Like you, you, right. you seem so different than Dylan Brooks when you're doing this to me, they're the same. Like you want to get at him. You want to prove you're tough by going this route. Is that's that's kind of how I read this. Like uh, to a certain extent, I kind of feel like Shannon, you're no different. Just let it go. Who cares? No one's thinking about this. No one even cares about this non-story of this person who got kicked out the game. It's disappointing. So, His behavior. Yeah, is yeah, it, yeah. It, it just kind of seemed like he didn't have to do it. It seemed unnecessary. Um, now that's the part of it that I don't like. 
the part of it that I appreciate, much like you, is the message itself. So in this instance, I'm separating art from artists. And in a vacuum, I agree with what Shannon Sharp is saying. And mm -hmm. I do, I, like, I, I agree with those sentiments. Uh, and I do think that at times it's unfortunate that a lot of our, uh, that a lot of the people who make it, uh, who represent us in terms of the black community, uh, who become self-actualized, which is mostly through sports and entertainment and music, um, you know, they get to this point, but they still feel the need to carry a lot of these, um, you know, these these habits and behaviors with them. And I do think that it's worth hearing every now and again, you don't have to do that. There's a better way. But, you know, a lot of times when it comes to people in our community, and we talked about this with the women, there's this, I, there's this, there's this perception of what constitutes strong black man. And a lot of times those constitutions are conflated with certain things like being from the streets and being tough guy who exhibits toughness from the streets. And there's different ways to go about exacting your toughness without sort of trying to make it a point that you're a street person or that you're a tough guy within a street context, which would include hanging around people who also come from those same environments. Uh, and that's not to mention the fact that you can be putting your life and your livelihood in danger by associating with some of these individuals. So old habits are, of course, hard to break. And it's not as easy as saying, hey, let that go. Because when you've come up in a type of environment for as long as you did, it's not as it's not so easy as to just shake it off you and become this evolved, sophisticated person. So it's helpful to hear messages like Shannon's on a regular enough basis so as to sort of remind you in the back of your head, at least there might be a different way to do this. And so I don't have to engage in some of these things in order to feel as though I'm still a part of my community or stay true to myself. So like the message, don't like the way this whole thing was orchestrated. It feels like an orchestration to me, which stems from the incident from the Lakers game against the Grizzlies way back. And from that standpoint, I just think it's kind of foul on Shannon's part. Um, and I can say that while at, say, while at the same time also saying that I can somewhat appreciate what he's trying to say, because I do agree with the sentiment it just there's parts of it that just kind of seem dirty to me because it seems like you use that non story um, as your opportunity to call this kid out. And you, the only reason why you felt motivated to do that is because of how, you know, they rolled up on you at that game uh, and sort of kind of, you know, got in your pocket a little bit. Uh, and, you know, you've done what you've done. You got all of these. You got so you got so much skin in the game after all of these years, bro. And you living good, you know, you didn't have to go that route. But I feel like in that moment, he, you know, kind of reduced himself to being on their level, quite frankly. And, you know, in my opinion, that was just a little unbecoming of him. Yeah, I agree. And he, he's coming off as a hater to these young people. because More and more he is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because Ja, ja is, uh, he's Iverson 2.0 for these kids. And he's looking like he's living the lifestyle of it too, hanging out with guys getting probed at NBA games. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's that? And why they got to use probe of all words? <laughs> like, what are we really, what are we really doing? But it sounds like this probing was an investigation on Mr. Jaw and uh, his uh, his uh, entourage, but. If he is really hanging with people, because he he does use some real rapper talk whenever he's addressing mm -hmm. people in public. Um, he's he's so young that he doesn't understand what he sounds like when he's speaking, and he's talking like created rappers in the early two thousands. He doesn't sound like somebody who has a mother and a father in his life and but he does you know, though that's the thing right right and yeah, first round yeah. pick and you know mm -hmm. a loving sister and family and all that good jazz i think he lives in a house with at least when i first seen him when he was in lee he was living in a house with all his people and you know he's a good guy he's a good kid so um i think that's the part where shannon's more or less uh reaching on like you know you're not street tough mm-hmm you know, you ain't street hard. Those street hard guys are damaged humans. 
And you're not that. You just listen to one too many rap songs. Yeah. And so that's the part of the message was like, yeah, I get that. You know, right. and um, if you came to him like big bro or uncle, <laughs> whatever people are calling people nowadays, because I'm pretty sure he would have squashed all the other stuff, you know, the spat that because uh, while he was spatting with Brooks and all of them, you know, because I think Jaw Dad stepped on the floor, you know, nothing crazy, but you know, Jaw Dad. Well, yeah, Jaw Dad was Jaw's Dad was being a peacekeeper, right, right, and yeah. so, um, so it's still a thing where it's just like you're de- you're you're dealing, you're talking about this person. That's the thing. People are having conversations on the internet like us, right? Like people can't hear it. Like, pe- like other people can't hear it. Now, I'm going to stand on what I talk about now, all right? But at the same time, you have to be mindful that you have a broadcasting thing. And like you said, you know, Fox Sports, if they talked about it at 6 o'clock in the morning, they're going to talk about that all the way till 1 p.m. Mm-hmm. They using, they're recycling the same thing throughout various shows. Yeah. But over here, we got to talk about how soft John Moran is. You can't drive with that. Like you said, that's a little, it's a little sus. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, it speaks to pettiness from him side, from his side. But I'm telling you, man, when you drinking that alcohol, and this is your <laughs> life, it's at some <laughs> point, yeah, man. At some point, you're gonna make alcoholic decisions, and the decisions that he's making are alcoholic, and they come and. Speak into the sense of, I'm pretty sure he was drinking some yak the night before, the day before that. I'm pretty sure when he was at that game, he was all slizzered up. I'm pretty sure he hits the air all, uh, uh, you know, all greased up too. So I'm not saying he was drunk that day or drinking that day, but just because once you have been drinking and you're just in that the, the that that mode. You have six decisions to make right now, but you're drunk. You're going to make six bad decisions. Not all of them, but they're they're not at the the level that you would have made if you were sober. And then now, but now you just made six decisions that were drunk. Now you drank again. Now you got to make five more decisions, but you're still, you're drunk and you're stacking the drunk decisions on the next day. So now you've made 11 now it's not eleven drastic things. This is some. This is trash. You normally pick up. You didn't do it. This is a phone call you normally make, but you didn't do it. This is something else over there that you squandered or messed up, but you normally don't. These aren't big things, but they add up over time. And right now, I think him being so on, he's he's buying himself, and he believes this new Shay Shay character yeah. yeah and he's doing this stuff and it's just like damn bro you seem so solid why are you buying into Shay Shay but he's running around acting like a character of a person instead of a real person at this point so yeah. if he wants to sit there and have a come to Jesus moment with Ja he needs to have one with himself uh, because he hasn't been uh, I mean I've been like I said, media wise, as soon as he hit CBS back in the day, I was like, this guy's amazing. Mm-hmm. Up until, like I said, this year, where it's just like, hey, you know what, man? What you got going on? Do I have to reevaluate you? Because you're acting kind of strange. So, uh, message, uh, like I said, on point, but Shannon, this is more of a, a Shannon um, tighten up thing for me, more than a Ja Morant, because Ja's a young guy. And hopefully he can look at the Iverson story and the Iverson tale. Maybe he can talk to Iverson. And so Iverson can put him up on game on how he wasted time and years and effort uh, pouring into people who weren't on the same level as him, but because they all grew up together. Now, I don't know Jaws situation, if this is what he's got going on, but if it is what he has going on, then there's, there's enough stories in the NBA by now for him to take heed from somebody. So he can put his life in a different direction. Well, he's not dealing with people getting probed. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah I, 
Yeah, I hear all of that, but yeah, this is this to me is more of a Shannon Sharp story. Yeah, and right. um, you know, Shannon, yeah, Shannon's just become more, you know, it, it and it is what it is, man. I've spoken on the narcissism of some of these sports commentators over the years. Like you skip is the same way, you know, skip. Mm -hmm. Skip got in hot water because, you know, that DeMar Hamlin and he tweeted, how can they not finish the game? And, you know, they came for his neck. And the thing about it is, like, you get so enveloped in the persona that you've curated for yourself as a TV personality that you start to just kind of think that you can just operate, move and do and say whatever you want. Right. And, you know, that's just not the case, especially when you're in it, especially when that's and especially when you're somebody who is as advanced as he is in terms of the years that he's put into this. Like you're like 30 years older than this guy. Like John Moran is what, 22, 23? He's a jit. He's a jit. You know, so it's like, wh what do you stand to gain by making that a segment on your show other than to make yourself look like the steward of the message to young black athletes about the right and wrong way to do things, which would be okay. If it wasn't for the fact that you was almost about to get into a fight with these dudes exactly, three weeks ago bro. at a basketball game kids. Yeah. So like, why are you in that situation? Number one. And number two, you're going to get into that situation and then knowingly take that and, and talk about this story on your show. It speaks to, Yes, he it, it, it's a dual personality. There's Shannon, the regular guy, and then there's Club Shay Shay. <laughs> and when Club and when and when Shay and when Shannon Sharp is on that show, he's Club Shay Shay, and he thinks he's Mr. Untouchable. And this is not something that is independent under Shannon Sharp. Skip Bayless does the same thing to a certain extent. Stephen A. Smith does the same thing. These big people who make million dollar salaries to be on these shows, uh, who are kind of you know, you know, obviously you can't, there are certain things you can't do, domestic violence issues, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, can't be caught on camera doing or saying anything racist, of course, right? You'll get fired for that. But barring any of that kind of stuff, you're untouchable in terms of whether you're fireable or not. You know, and, and when you're in a point when you're at a point where you're unfireable, you might, you know, spit spot off at the hip and do all kinds of stuff. And that's where these people have gotten to the level where they're just so enveloped in their own TV persona that they can just make things personal and think that no one's going to pick up on that. Like, bro, it looks personal, Shannon. It looks personal. It does. Um, and it looks personal involving some 23-year-old kid who's an NBA player or however old John Moran is, 23, 24, he's a jit. Right. So, like, it is what it is, man, but... Yeah, I don't know what Shannon Sharp is on nowadays. Um, you know, he, he he's get off my lawn and he's Mr. Tough Guy. Like, you know, it, it's as if he was saying, you ain't tough, job, but I am type thing was kind of his tone. And it's like, well, what does that prove? You just want to show people that you're the tough guy who's willing to scrap if necessary, but John Morant isn't. You want to call him out for being soft? Like, it just kind of looked like the whole thing was in poor taste. It honestly did. And, and, and maybe I would have a different opinion if it wasn't for the history that he has with the guys on that team, John ja Moran mm -hmm. included. But that those are the facts. That's the history of events. That's what actually happened. And so I feel like Shannon Sharp, more than anyone else, needs to fall back from this situation. Yeah, and if you, if you want to talk about um, – if you want to talk about – damn, I forgot what I'm about to say. Um, damn, what was I gonna say? I don't know, but it again, um, poor, like you said, poor taste, uh, bad look for him, uh, talking about kids, um, the this the Shay Shay stuff, it's it's too much <laughs> for me, yeah, it's too, it's too much for me. I can't, I don't like the liquor, I'm gonna be honest, and I, I'm, I'm blaming a lot of it on that. But I think that his ego over the years has gotten more inflated, uh, as you mentioned. So, yeah, this is just a recipe for for disaster. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I think I'm honestly witnessing the unraveling of of Shannon Sharp, the man on his square. Now, I'm not saying he's going to do anything crazy, but he's going to do some stuff. 
I think that this Dylan Brooks uh, situation, uh, him doing all this barking with people, I don't think it stops here. And I think I think this is trending behavior for him. Now again, I don't know what this is doing for their metrics. Uh, I don't know what they're what they're doing. If all of this is publicity, and they say, "Hey man, we need you to turn up," all right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. But uh, be that as it may, whether it's contrived or not, I don't like it, and I'm disappointed that Shannon would either do this intentionally or or not. So, uh, yeah, this whole um, Club Shay Shay, we do something before two something. I don't know what that means, uh, but he going to do something for two something. And uh, that this is a uh, <laughs> – he been doing stuff. Yeah. So, enjoy, yeah, Shay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe Skip Bayless has rubbed off on him too much. <laughs> I think so. I think so. I think he got the Skip bug. He done had too, he done, he done had too many conversations with him. And now yeah. he think he got the sauce of what it takes to be relevant in this sports media world. And it ain't that, man. Uh, yeah. tr- trust and believe, bro. So yeah, I'm disappointed. Just disappointed. Yeah, too bad. Too bad, Shannon. Uh, you know, maybe we'll, you know, do better, Shannon. We ain't, we ain't, you do know, better, you dude. Need to, like, yeah, you didn't need to, st- yeah, you ain't need to stoop to that, bro. Like, no one was talking about that except y'all. I mean, that was the only show in which that thing came up. Yeah. Um, so th- that's not a coincidence. You know, it, it can't be. But whatever it is, whatever, it, whether it's a coincidence or not, it was content for this channel, nevertheless. And we certainly appreciate that. So keep it coming, fellas. Uh, <laughs> right. We've talked about Shannon on the, we've we've talked about Shannon on this channel before, so Shannon Sharp as well is becoming a friend of the channel slowly but yeah. surely. <laughs> Shay Shay, yeah, facts. Uh, but on that note, man, good stuff tonight, man. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Appreciate everybody for who appreciate everyone who joined us on the stream. Um, as you can see on our ticker across the bottom of the screen, man, we are at a race to 1,000 subscribers. So, you know, as y'all catch wind of these videos, keep on clicking that subscribe button if you're not a part of the tribe. We certainly appreciate you supporting logical content. Uh, keep hitting that like button. Uh, keep leaving those comments. We certainly appreciate that. Uh, I am JV Wins. That is Dogon SS. You can find Conscious Approach on Instagram at Con Approach, C O N A P P R O A C H. Uh, as well as the uh, approaching launch of the audio RSS feed on all podcast platforms. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, You can find me on Instagram at JVWins, J-V-W-I-N-S. And if you happen to be watching this video on the meta page, go ahead and like the page, follow Conscious Approach, go ahead and share the video there as well. Uh, We certainly appreciate you supporting logical content as always as we continue to crank out all of this good content. We are going to keep it moving onward and upward. So join us along for the ride, man. We do this every week, every other day. So uh, love to have you as a part of the tribe. Join the community. Thank you for supporting Logical Content. Yes, sir. And the name is Dogon SS. You can find me on Instagram at Dogon underscore SS or on YouTube at Dogon underscore SS. I'm about to say something else. But, yeah, you can also find me on Instagram at Hurricane underscore dogon all right that is the new instagram page for the new channel uh that's coming down the pipeline all right so please uh be aware of that i'll let you guys know officially when that launches like that but when it happens uh go ahead and subscribe over there too man why not all right uh especially if you're watching this post talk it didn't already happen so get over there all right <laughs> And like we always say, man, or at least like I always say on every part, man, don't be too high, don't be too low. Keep it calm, keep it chill, keep it player, man, keep it even kill, and then let no, don't let anybody get you off your pivot. All right. And so uh, until the next time, guys, we'll catch you on the flip side. Yeah, yeah that's right. Thirsters beware, women. Y'all ain't off. Y'all y'all don't get a pass no more. Y'all get calling out. You gonna get raked through the coals just like we would. In yep, that same situation. Out. So think about that before you decide that you want to call another woman's man hot on social yeah. media. And we subscribe to the channel too. <laughs> yeah. uh, but on that note, man, we're going to go ahead and close out. I appreciate everybody for tuning in.
Thank you for watching. Until the next video, thank you for supporting the Conscious Approach channel on YouTube. We are out. Peace. Peace.